Hi friends, welcome back to another tutorial. Today we're doing another page in our watercolor journal. For this one, I chose a beautiful little dough and I'm so excited because we're gonna have a lot of fun with fur texture, with background effects, all kinds of great things. So grab your paints and join me. Really quick, let's talk about our supplies today. I have my Paul Rubens watercolor journal. It's 140 pound cotton hot press paper and I've used my washi tape to tape around the edges so we get nice borders. I have two brushes today. I'm using my silver black velvet size eight and size four round brushes, water jar, paper towel for blotting. And for the snow effects at the end today, I'm gonna to be using my Dr. PH Martin's Bleed Proof White. And the colors on my palette today are Holbein Turquoise Blue, Daniel Smith Indigo, Daniel Smith Transparent Brown Oxide, Holbein Scarlet Lake, Windsor & Newton Transparent Orange, Holbein Gamboge Nova, and this is Daniel Smith Moon Glow. I've been using it a lot lately for all of my winter paintings. You should know that this is a fugitive paint color, so if you do decide to frame a painting or you wanna display it somewhere exposed to light, just be aware that this color will fade over time. But for something like a watercolor journal, it's just perfect and it's such a fun color. So grab your pencil and start by deciding on the dimensions of your deer's head. Alright, so make sure your paper towel is handy. I'm actually going to start with the background. I'm going to erase my markings along the neck just enough so I can still see them a little bit. I want to create soft edges pretty much entirely with the paint. Alright, to create those soft edges we utilize the wet and wet technique. This is my favorite technique for creating fuzzy fur that's overlapping with the background. And let's work in sections because hot press paper tends to dry really fast. So it's a good idea to just do one small section at a time, just to ensure that we get the timing right on this. Notice how I'm overlapping the water into the neck, over the top of where we erased the pencil marks. And then I'm gonna take that Daniel Smith Moon Glow. In the reference photo, the background is green, but I wanna make this look a little more wintry and even kind of suggest trees back here. So notice how I'm swirling my brush side to side and then right here next to the neck, really quick, I'm rinsing my brush and I'm gonna grab some transparent brown oxide, swirl it around on my palette very lightly with a little bit of water, adding in a little bit of indigo. So we have this dusty brownish gray color. And with that, I'm gonna paint a first layer of fur inside our deer's neck where we overlapped the water. And you can flatten your brush out and just go ahead and spread that color all across the neck. And notice how these two edges pretty much just merge seamlessly on the paper. I'm going to use this opportunity while it's still damp to drop in some blooms. Make sure you don't have puddles or that your paper isn't too wet at this stage. Otherwise, these really won't work. Again, the timing is essential to get it right here. And then we can go ahead and move to the other side and do the same thing. And once again, if you have damp paint, you can use this opportunity either to add another layer of trees if you'd like to darken anything. That's what I'm doing here. And then you can go ahead and add blooms again. This is my favorite thing about this color is that because it's a three pigment color, this moon glow, it tends to separate when you add water and the blooms with this color are just beautiful. We briefly mixed up a light grayish brown. That was using our Daniel Smith Indigo and Transparent Brown Oxide. Let's mix up some more of that. Swirl it around in your palette and add enough water so that it's just a nice light tinted wash. And if you have too much on your brush, remove it 
on your paper towel. And let's just paint in a base color everywhere we see dark gray. I'm going to make that a little lighter even for this ear. We want to start with a light layer because in this deer's fur we see ticking actually. We see dark fur mixed with light fur. Start with your lightest color whenever you see complex fur like that and then you can layer wet and dry over the top. Notice I have a little more brown in my mixture now. So more transparent brown oxide, less indigo. Pulling that down into the neck. And let's just take some brown and paint it right over the body. If you want to, you can let your brush scrape across the surface of the paper, missing little gaps in the paper. And that will naturally apply some texture that almost looks like fuzzy fur. Okay, so grabbing some more of my gray, I'm gonna go into the other ear. It's a little dark, just remove some. Right now, everything looks a little bit flat, doesn't it? That's because we don't have any contrast yet. Everything is all kind of the same value. Don't worry, we'll get there. We'll work on that. It's going through one of those ugly phases again that is pretty typical with watercolor. Okay, we're painting the center of the head, that dark gray. I'm watering it down quite a lot here on the top of the muzzle, even more on this side. And then adding another layer across the neck being careful not to mess too much with that soft edge that we worked so hard to achieve. In the reference photo, I actually see little hints of blue, especially in the areas of the deer that are white fur, like in the white of the ears and the white of the snout. For that, we can use a little bit of our turquoise blue, this very cool blue. So water it down quite a bit. And then we'll go over the white fur with that color, just adding a nice, lovely, slight tint of blue. I'm going to switch to my size 4 round brush and I'm going to take some indigo, much more pigmented now, mixing in a little of the transparent brown oxide and with that I'm going to start to paint the really dark details on the tip of the ear here. You can outline that edge first and then begin to use the tip of the brush using tiny short quick brush strokes to begin adding fur texture to the ear. And you can see already we have that wonderful effect of fur. And then add the inner ear, again with your black mixture. Anywhere you need to go a little darker, just add more layers. Okay, I'm rinsing that out. Then I'm going to grab a little bit of this brown that's on my palette and use that to just go over what I just painted. So I'm losing a little of the detail that I painted, but that's intentional. I want to soften it out somewhat. And you can even pump up the blue in the ear a little more. I'm grabbing some more of that turquoise blue and you can see, ooh, it's too bright. So dilute it slightly. Okay, grab some more black and you can move on to the other ear. I'm going to spread out the bristles of my brush just by flattening it on the palette. There's still paint in the brush and that's helping keep the bristles separated. And that really is kind of a shortcut for me for creating this texture quickly. And this ear is a little bit lighter than the one on the left. So I'm using more reserve here, holding back somewhat. Rinse that out. And then once again, grab a tiny bit of your brown and darken the tip with a wash. This is also smoothing out some of that detail. Okay, now we haven't used the yellow or the orange yet. I'm going to take a little bit of that Gamboge Nova, this warm yellow, and mix in a tiny bit of the transparent orange, diluting it somewhat. In the reference photo, I see this area under the chin that's more warm in color temperature. So I'm swiping along there with my yellow mixture. I'm going to do that on the left side too. Remove some from my brush and then soften that edge. And then I'm going to dip my brush in water so I have a lot of loose, wet paint on my brush and just cover the whole body of the deer in that yellowish tone. Because it's transparent paint, we still get a sense of that scruffy texture. And then this area right here is very dark fur. So while that's somewhat wet, we can go in and grab some transparent brown oxide and indigo, again, creating your dark black. This is where the contrast is going to come in. You're going to really see this painting start to pop as soon as you add these really dark details. So look at that. We're going to paint so dark right here in that crease between the shoulder and the neck turning. And let your brush bristles separate a little bit so you can create some fur texture in there. There's these stripes of dark fur where the neck is turning, giving us a sense of contour lines really. Remove some of that if it's too dark now as you transition upwards towards the area more in the light. I'm going to remove some of that and I can tell that these details are a bit too contrasty right now so I'm going to need to probably knock those down a little bit but this is giving us a strong start. Okay now I'm taking more pure brown and connecting that right up to that dark area that we just painted. I'm going to dip into the red a little bit so we have more of a warm color temperature, light and dark all intermixed. And it can be a little intimidating to paint something like that, but wherever possible, just simplify. Once again, spreading out the bristles of the brush and just roughly and quickly painting this texture here. Okay, I'm taking a little bit more of that red, mixing in some water and pulling some of that color into the neck underneath the chin. We need a little bit more gray and 
cooler tone in the neck itself. You can see it's slightly more cool. So I'm mixing in some turquoise blue. And with that, I'm beginning to add some more texture to the neck underneath the chin. Add it under the eyes. Starting to build out the contours of the face using very light washes. Go slowly and kind of sneak up to the final values here. You don't want to just jump in all in, all dark right away. A little more gray. And starting to paint some of these subtle mid-tone values that are helping the head pop forward. Let's go ahead and do this left eye. Starting with the eyelashes. This is so tiny. You can see just by how small my brush is next to my fingers. I'm working with a really tiny brush. Paint carefully around the highlight. And then if you can avoid that little tiny rim of light underneath the eye, that'll add wonderful detail. Go ahead and do the other eye while you have that dark black paint on your brush. This is a great way to not waste paint. <laughs> if you see other areas in the painting where you have that particular color on your brush and you still have plenty left, just use it up and we'll add that sweet little eyelash. Now the final really high contrast area in this part of the face is this forehead. So we still have enough paint on our brush, hopefully, if it's loaded up with paint, to start to paint that in. So now I'm scumbling my brush on, painting all this dark color, pulling that color up towards the forehead. As the paint wears off, of course, it's getting lighter in value. And this is good because towards the top of the head, it gets lighter in the reference photo. So allow your brush to wear off on the paper here and scrape it across the surface to create texture. I'm not using the point of the brush. I'm just using the side of it and it's missing little gaps in the paper, working effortlessly for me to create that fuzzy texture. Remove some of that. It's too dark now for this portion of the head and we'll begin to soften as it transitions down into the snout. A little lighter, quite a bit lighter. This area, I'm gonna actually use some more of my yellow and mix that with some of the brown and black. So I have this more of a yellowish warm tan on my brush. And let's go across the snout again with that. Might look a little dark at first, but remember that watercolor does dry lighter. And then fill in anywhere you see that tan tone. I'm gonna dip in the water, remove a little bit so it's lighter right here. And then you can add some gray underneath this muzzle where it's a little bit darker. You don't want it to be pure white necessarily. And while you have that gray in your brush, you can darken the highlights in the eyes. Don't cover them up completely. <laughs> and then here in the forehead, just above the eyes, there's some more separations and anatomy I want to capture. So I'm painting mid-tones that are helping us get a sense of the shape of the head. I'm gonna use some more pure brown right here. And to balance it out, we'll do that on the other eye too, in the inner corner of the eye. Remember that we're working really small in a journal, so if you don't get all the detail in there, that's okay. But since you guys have this reference photo, or you can download it in the description below, take your time and see what level of detail you can bring it to, if that's something you wanna do. So we're just modifying, adjusting, adding layers, all based on what we see in the reference photo. We see a slightly darker shape here. And then next to the muzzle, there's a very dark crease right there, giving us a sense of the turning of the jaw as the doe is chomping or chewing whatever it is she's eating and add some stronger fur texture underneath the chin and add another fur crease right here. These wonderful little details are really helping us get a sense of the turning neck of the deer. Let's go ahead and add the dark details on the nose. We're gonna take some turquoise blue and mix in a little bit of indigo so it's a slightly more true blue and paint that across the highlight on the top. This is ultimately gonna be the lightest area but we need to get a base color down and it's definitely darker than white even though it's a highlight and then mix up some more of your black. Now this might still be wet, so just be cautious with your dark color around that. You don't want it to accidentally bleed out. Rinse it out so it's not so dark, but still has paint on the brush. And now with this slightly lighter value, paint this little shape right here and overlap some of the highlight. And I'm gonna swipe in this section and right here. And then I'm gonna darken this light area in this one as well and outline the mouth with some tiny little rounded fur texture shapes. More fur texture. Even though it's white, it looks cool in the shadow. I'm gonna use that under the eye. Wherever possible, if you're using bright colors like this blue, for example, try to balance it out in other areas of the painting. So I'm adding some of that to the fur in the neck and we can even put some in the fur on the deer's back. And now I'm gonna take a little bit of my light brown, darken up the side of the face a little bit. I'm gonna add a little bit of fur texture across the snout. 
So I'm spreading out the bristles of my brush. I have some dark paint and I'm really just ever so gently using the tips of the bristles and add some scruffy texture to the top of the head. That looks more soft, I think. Look for any unresolved shapes or any disconnects that might have happened. So now we get to do the really fun part here. We're gonna add our snow. So grab your white opaque paint, grab a tiny brush, load your brush up and start dabbing on some snow. It is important to allow your snow to overlap the animal that you're painting. You can allow some of the snow to collect on the deer's head and on the deer's ears, like you see in the reference photo. Make some of your snowflakes bigger and some smaller. I don't generally put snow in front of the eyes just because those are the focal point. You don't want anything too distracting there. Add as much or as little snow as you want. This is the fun part. I think that's enough snow. Oh, looks so cute. I'm glad we chose a more wintry color, I think, than the green in the background, just because it looks more classic winter. Um, the moon glow is just so beautiful with that separation of color. Let's remove the tape and see how our borders did. Ah, oh, so fun. There we go. So there is the finished deer. I hope you guys got to try this and paint along with me. Tag me on Instagram if you did, I'd love to see it. If you haven't subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button for more watercolor tutorials like this. Check out these other videos all about painting animals in watercolor. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.